Hey friend, Brandon here. Here are my favorite accessories for the Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro, and there are a ton of them. You're gonna find at least one cool thing here, I promise you. And this is YouTube, so all the links are in the description. Okay, let's first talk about gaming. Well, the logical choice for gaming on the Google Pixel 6 would be Google Stadia, but it isn't doing so hot right now. One of the best options for playing high-end games on the Google Pixel is with Xbox Game Pass, and it's tremendous library of games that are available for many other devices, including your phone. The fact that I can play Halo Infinite on this is pretty wild, but I still don't really know how any of you use a controller for first person shooters, but you know, you do you. <laughs> a great accessory to give you that Nintendo Switch or Steam Deck experience with the display from the Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro is the Game Sear X2. It's a great option. Normally I would suggest the Razer Kishi, but the camera bar in the Google Pixel 6 gets in the way and prevents it from working. And this one has a nice spring loaded design that makes a lot of sense and I really enjoy using it. I really like its layout, how comfortable it is to hold, the full gamut of buttons, the sturdy design, and even its ability to charge your phone. Now let's talk about clock and wearables. I've been checking out Fitbits a lot lately, both for their health and sleep tracking, but also to get a glimpse of what we could possibly get in a Google Pixel Watch. I've gone in depth a bit on the Google Pixel Watch and you can watch a video about it on the card up here. The Fitbit Charge 5 is an easy way to get a feel for the Fitbit ecosystem with its slim design filled with tons of sensors. And it doesn't take up a ton of room on your wrist, which is nice. If you want a full on Fitbit experience, the Fitbit Sense is a great health and fitness tracker with tons of sensors on it to capture your heart rate, perform ECG tests, track your calories, calories and heart rate while working out, your stress levels, and my favorite, track your sleep. It even has a Google Assistant built into it, so that's pretty cool, and it works both on iOS and Android. If you want the latest and greatest feature pack smartwatch with the newest Wear OS, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 is a great choice. It has a great slim design, a nice display, mostly smooth software performance, and a bunch of the athletic health and sleep tracking that you'd find on a Fitbit. But it's important to know that the sensors may not be as robust as Fitbit, and you don't get the Fitbit community. And I would say that the sleep tracking on the Fitbit is way better. But but what you do get that's different than a Fitbit is a great smartwatch for features like notifications, the ability to take calls, and so much more. Unfortunately, this did not launch with a Google Assistant and probably won't for a while. Instead, we get Bigsby. If you want a robust design for a smartwatch, the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic is a good choice. While the normal 4 has a slim design and you can navigate around the software by sliding your finger along the edge of the watch face, the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic has a physical dial instead. It is not only nice to use, but also provides a bit more protection on the screen if you happen to fall and scrape your watch against something. Now let's talk about connectivity. Here's an accessory for your phone that you probably never thought about or heard about. This tiny little sticker that is super affordable. What do you think it is? This is an NFC sticker. These things are super cheap and easy to put everywhere, but here's where they become amazing. If you download the NFC Tools app, and there's a pro one that I paid for, you can program the NFC sticker to automate different processes or actions when you tap on it. You could put it on your nightstand, so maybe it automates and goes into the do not disturb mode and launches your sleep tracking app. It's super fun and easy to set up. I've uh, set this one up to toggle on and off my flashlight. So just like that, easy. How cool is that? You know what's also inexpensive and super easy to do? Subscribing to this channel. In fact, if you do that right now, you can do it for free. So all it takes is one little click, and while you're at it, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when I post another video. There's one accessory that I think everyone should have, and it's a tracker. While there are Air Tags and Samsung Galaxy Tags, those only work on their respective devices or ecosystems. With this tracker, a Tile Pro works on both Android and iOS, and works with the Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. This has been so helpful for me in terms of finding my lost items, and the Tile network is fairly robust. The only downside is that this specific model does not have ultra wideband support which allows you to have some extremely precise location tracking and that would be really cool because it can give you an augmented reality view of your environment so you can find things specifically but Tile supposedly has one that supports that coming out soon. I hope that's sooner than later and uh, Tile you know if you want to send it my way that would be really cool. Now let's talk about power. If you've purchased a new smartphone lately you've probably noticed that they don't include chargers anymore which is kind of crazy especially when you need a specific charger and cable to utilize fast charging like on the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Well, this 30 watt Spigen ArcStation Pro charger is a great option. Not only does it charge compatible devices quickly, but it also uses gallium nitride or GAN charging technology that gives it the ability to be super powerful and a very small form factor. I can easily put this in my pocket. Everyone needs a battery backup, and this one is unique because it has something built into it that I just haven't seen in any other battery bank. If you look closely, this one has a tile tracker built into it so you can use it both to locate your phone, but also so you can locate your battery backup. How convenient is that? It also 
also has ports to fast charge over USB-C and USB-A to take advantage of its 9,000 milliamp capacity, along with a really nice grippy design, which I really like. If you have a Google Pixel, you gotta have a Google Pixel stand. This is the newest model with a bit of a redesign compared to the previous one. It has compatibility with the previous generation of Google Pixel Buds for wireless charging and provides fast charging for the Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. And there might be some room there to fit a Google Pixel Watch whenever that comes out. The best part is that it activates Google Pixel specific features that make it into something like a smart home hub like device where you can control your smart home devices, immediately see video feeds from your Nest cams, use it for the Google Assistant, or have photos cycle through it like a picture frame. You know, ecosystems are kind of nice. This type of accessory became quite popular over the past couple of years and we use it all the time in my house. It's a UV cleaner that has a wireless charger built into it. This Samsung one has a really nice and clean look to it and it's a really great thing to have around just to plop your phone in after a day of work while also being able to charge your phone at the same time. Here's an accessory that may seem a little bit confusing but it's also really cool and it uses the Apple MagSafe ecosystem on an Android phone. So here are Nomad's MagSafe stands. You just put the MagSafe charger into them and then I can put my Google Pixel 6 Pro on it and it charges just fine. In fact, I can use pretty much any MagSafe accessory on my Android phone from chargers and stands like this to wallets, battery banks, and more all because of this case right here by Moment that has super strong M-Force magnets built into it that make it compatible with MagSafe. What an incredible hack giving you access to a huge ecosystem of accessories. Speaking of the Moment case, let's talk about creative accessories. Moment cases are fantastic because of the M-Force magnet built into it that give you access to accessories in the MagSafe ecosystem, including Moment's own accessories and mounts. We'll talk about that in a moment. But this case also gives you the ability to mount lenses onto it, which is really cool. Since the main lens is the best looking lens on every smartphone, being able to add a high quality lens on top of it to get a different focal length without the decrease in quality from using, you know, one of the other built-in lenses is huge. I filmed an entire video on the Google Pixel 6 Pro and Moment lenses, which you can check out in the card linked up here. If you have a Moment case with the M-Force magnet built into it, they have a ton of different mounts that you can mount on it magnetically, which is so cool. There's one for the car they use all the time, one that adds a bunch of mounting threads to your phone, a couple tripod mounts, and so much more. They hang on pretty darn well, and it's how I was able to construct an insane rig like this. If you want to get higher quality audio without having to be close to your phone at all times, the Deity Pocket Wireless is a great choice. It's super compact and easy to use. This is great for being able to set your phone down somewhere and walk away from your phone while maintaining good audio for something like a vlog, a TikTok, or whatever else. If you want to go super extra with a camera on your phone, you can get a B-script, which allows you to put your phone in this beefy universal cage. You can mount a ton of different things onto this cage, like lighting, mics, and more. But the part that I love the most about it is that you can buy this attachment on it that allows you to put a Canon EF mount compatible lens onto it. This on your phone, how outrageous is this? <laughs> If your smartphone is super slippery, glossy, and fingerprint prone like this Google Pixel 6 Pro, you can add some extra grip to it and cover up those fingerprints, all while adding some extra protection to your phone from scratches and customizing it to your taste by adding a skin from channel sponsor Dbrand. There are a ton of options to choose from to get the look that you want. I really suggest getting at least a matte black skin for the Google Pixel 6 camera bar. It just makes it look way better. If you want a super solid case that protects your phone super well while also make it super grippy, the Dbrand grip case is my go-to case. I can literally throw my phone across the room and I'll survive it because of this case. On top of that, I have their limited edition full green leather skins on it that look insanely good on my sort of sunny Google Pixel 6 Pro. The patina and wear on the leather looks so good and the gold accents from the camera bar make this phone feel so high end to me. Honestly, if Dbrand ever has a leather drop again, you gotta get onto it right away. Otherwise, you can choose from a huge selection of other skins that look great too. Make sure to check out Dbrand's skins, grip cases, and many other accessories for a ton of other electronics by clicking the link in the description. Editor Brandon here, I can't believe I forgot one of the most important accessories for the Google Pixel 6 Pro, an actual screen protector that doesn't suck. This is the best glass screen protector out there for the Google Pixel 6 Pro. The Whitestone dome glass is able to provide full coverage even on the curves. It looks insanely clear, feels even smoother than the actual glass, and can even fill in some of the scratches on your screen because it uses Laka glue technology. That's the same glue used for the assembly of the display in your smartphone itself. Now if you want some installation tips and instructions, here they are, otherwise you can skip to the next part. Installation for the Whitestone Dome Glass can be overwhelming, but here are some tips. Use a level to level your surface, which is extremely important, and use an iron to steam any dust from the air, especially if you have pets. To install, make sure your phone is off. Put on these black stickers over buttons and holes, insert these sponges on the side, put the phone in the tray from the other side, and put the tray on top of the plastic packaging. Take off this top plastic thing and insert the sticker cover for the speaker and put the plastic thing back on. Clean your phone. Attach the arc to the tray, unscrew the color cap from the glue, then unscrew the black cap and let the lock of glue come out. 
out. Make sure it makes its way to the middle of your screen, put it in the dark color tab to the top piece of plastic, and then lay your tempered glass screen protector into the tray, and then pull out the tab slowly so it drops down onto the glue. You may need to help the glue make its way all around the edges of the protector. If you need to squeeze out any air bubbles, push them out from the closest edge at the top or bottom. It won't come out from the sides easily. Double check the glue is covering everything and then cure the glue with a UV light. Take it out of the tray, wipe it down, and cure it again. And that's it. I suggest not putting it into a case for at least a day, and yes, it should work with most cases because there's enough of a gap to support them. Seriously, Whitestone Dome Glass is my go-to tempered glass screen protector for all my smartphones as long as they support it. Now let's talk about audio. The Google Pixel Buds A are an obvious choice for earbuds on the Google Pixel 6 Pro. I also have a leather case from Nomad on my Pixel Buds. Now the Pixel Buds A have an extremely comfortable fit. It has native Google Assistant integration and it has a pretty decent sound for the price. It also has some smart adapting features that can adjust the volume based upon your surrounding. Unfortunately, this version doesn't have wireless charging like the previous version, but this one does come at a much nicer price point of around $100. At around $130, the OnePlus Buds Pro are surprisingly good sounding with a fantastically comfortable fit, decent active noise cancellation, a category leading IP55 dust and water resistance, and a design that makes the Apple AirPods Pro look less refined and high end. I really like these. My favorite Bluetooth earbuds for casual listening are normally around $200, but are often on sale for around $150, and they're the Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro. They have a great full sound with solid and tight low end and shimmering highs. Add in the wireless charging, the decent active noise cancellation, and you got some serious quality and sound for a decent price. I have a full experiential review of the entire Samsung Galaxy Buds lineup where you can hear the comparative differences between all of them linked in the card up here. You should really check it out. It's a really cool experience if you haven't seen any of my audio reviews. If you want the best of the best for active noise cancellation and price isn't as much of an issue for you, the Sony WH-1000XM4s are one of the best out there. It's insane how much sound they cancel out and the app provides the ability to adjust a lot of settings on there like EQ. I love this because I find that the Sony sound tends to be a little bit dark and I like to brighten it up a little bit. The drivers are high quality so it handles EQ adjustments really well. So when you combine custom EQ with industry leading ANC, these things are amazing. But let me know what your favorite accessory was in the comments and any accessories that you love that I haven't mentioned and make sure to check out the links in the description so you can pick them up for yourself. Thanks for watching. This is Tech Today. Until next time.